This is the fourth video in a series of steamer updates. It shows how to replace a damaged heating element. This heating element has been damaged and will need to be replaced. Okay, so here the leakage has caused the caustic to eat, eat away into the heating element. And this is right on the verge of shorting out. So um, what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to replace the heating unit. And here's the heat, here's the replacement heating uh, element that I was going to choose for this. It's not exactly the same as this, but it can fit. So I'm going to do it. The replacement heater is slightly wider than the original heater, so the plastic cover will have to be modified to make it fit. I got to clean this piece up, and I also have to take a file and I have to open up these openings a little bit because uh, this piece won't fit inside here. This is just a little bit wider, but it's very easy to modify this in order to make that fit. Use a file to widen the opening a little bit. So I'm just going to file a little at a time. So I'm going on the other side. Yeah, it's getting there. Then check the fit of the replacement heater with the plastic cover and the metal tray together. Just a little bit. Not too much. Okay, now check it again. When there is no gap between the plastic cover and the heating element, the filing is complete. The next step is to desolder the damaged heater from the circuit board. Remove the four screws that fasten the two halves of the plastic enclosure. There are two wires that connect the buzzer. Carefully move these aside to gain access to the underside of the circuit board. Use a piece of solder wick to soak up the solder on the pads where the heating element leads connect to the circuit board. The heating element leads will come off easily once the solder is removed. Repeat the process for the other lead. In this case it just dropped off. The replacement heater has a red lead and a black lead. The red lead is the live conductor and the black lead is the neutral conductor. Start with the red lead and insert it into the solder pad as shown. Solder the red lead to the circuit board. Next, insert the black lead into the second solder pad. Solder the black lead to the circuit board. Trim the excess with small wire cutters.
Reassemble the circuit board enclosure and replace the four screws. Seal the metal dish with neutral cure clear silicone adhesive sealant. Please see my previous steamer update video for more details about sealing the unit. Install a 1 amp inline fuse onto the live line of the power cord. The fuse should protect the circuit board in the event of a heater short. Please see the previous steamer update video on how to install a fuse. Fasten the power cord to the base with the two washer head screws. Reattach the circuit board enclosure with four screws. Check the two tactile switches to make sure they work. Loosen the nearest screw by one quarter turn if a switch is jammed, then recheck the switches. Apply thermal grease to both contact surfaces of the heater and the metal dish. The replacement heater runs hotter than the original factory heater. You can heat test the unit with plain distilled water after the silicone adhesive cures. Then you can remove some of the thermal grease to reduce the temperature into normal range. Close the base over the unit and snap it together.
Fasten the six screws that hold the base to the unit. Then replace the four foot pads. Allow seven days for the silicone adhesive to cure before doing any heat test. I hope you liked the video. Thank you for watching.